this has been years in the making. There was the first conference called Contesting the Streets five years ago, held at UCLA, jointly organized by UCLA Center for the Study of Urban Poverty and the USC's Center for the Study of Immigrant Integration. And for me personally, it was the most important conference I've ever been to. It was hugely influential. Um, and so for years, I've been saying, we've got to do this again. And I was talking with Abel for several years about doing this. And now we're finally here. And it's here at USC, closer to downtown Los Angeles, where locally street vending as an issue has only grown more urgent. Uh, at Los Angeles City Council currently is considering whether to lift the ban on street vending, a way of livelihood for some 50,000 people. But one of the things we wanted to do differently this time with the second um, conference was to expa expand to a global perspective because street vending controversies are happening in cities all around the world. And even though they're in such different places, the way the phenomenon is framed is surprisingly homogenous. Is it a conflict between the modern world-class smart city versus being inclusive of migrants and immigrants? This symposium seeks to rework that impasse of the uh, binary uh, conventional framework. So today's plenary brings together three keynotes who view the city from different perspectives and scales. We thought it'd be fascinating to interplay the ideas of these three distinguished urban scholars, so we asked them to not only give their own individual speeches, but then afterwards to engage in a dialogue with each other. Um, tomorrow, we'll continue with a day of paper presentations and discussions <coughs> with activists, government officials, and scholars on cases of what's happening in cities around the world. So from these, we hope to create new empirically-based narratives that help us out of the impasse that besets cities around the globe. So now I'd like to um, introduce Abel Valenzuela, who will be introducing our first keynote speaker. Dr. Valenzuela is the chair of the UCLA Cesar Chavez Department of Chicano Studies and holds joint appointment to the Department of Urban Planning. Uh, his research is primarily concerned with the issues faced by minorities and immigrants in the U.S., and he's uh, produced important work, especially about California's day laborers. Dr. Valenzuela. Uh, this is really, really exciting. Uh, I, I was asked um, by my two co-conveners um, to give a little bit of a reflection on our last conference five years ago. Um, Kim was one of our participants, and I'm thrilled to death that it was that influential in her own career. It certainly um, um, allowed us to uh, enable a relationship um, that has fr um, blossomed to this current, um, I think, conference. And so um, it's always good to get tangibles from conferences, and that's one of them. So thank, thank, um, I thank her for that. Um, so I have a, 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 a few prepared comments. I'm going to take maybe five minutes, um, because I like to follow instructions. I hope I take five minutes. So five and a half years ago, UCLA and USC hosted the first Contesting the Streets um, conference. It was actually called Contesting the Streets, Vending Open Air Markets and Public Space. At the time, I was working with then graduate student Rocio Rosales um, and her ethnographic research project on fruit vendors here in Los Angeles. Uh, my own interest in day labor and street enterprises brought us together and got us thinking about other researchers who were doing similar work. I had a small grant and, a, and in a conversation about a possible convening, I solicited the co-sponsorship and the collaboration of my good friend and colleague, Manuel Pastor. Um, Rocio and I planned what I thought was a fabulous convening for many reasons, um, including some of the repeat performances that we will see this time around. There's many, um, or several participants have returned to share new work with us. Rocio will likely join us tomorrow. She's currently an assistant professor of sociology at UC Irvine. Her projects on fruit vending and other street enterprises are being published, including a manuscript. Um, so she may very well be another few Another one of a, of, a, of a, in a small edition of scholars promoting this type of work that's likely to get tenure. Uh, it's very exciting. Five years ago, we were interested in exploring intolerance, restrictions, and various policies and promising practices that different states, municipalities, and local NGOs and others were promoting 
to stem some of the conflict and to make this industry more expansive and efficient and fruitful for both the vendors and consumers and other stakeholders such as merchants, residents, and passersby. As you will note, we are still very much interested in the, in the contestation of space and open air markets on sidewalks and on streets. Five years ago, we were also deeply insistent and concerned about not having a US-centric focus on street vending, particularly in terms of interventions. We felt that we could learn greatly from what others were doing in different parts of the world. Street vending, after all, is global, and how it's played out locally in Singapore, for example, can be instructive for other local contexts and the processing of spatial contestations among street entrepreneurs. As you can tell from our lineup, we are still very much interested in learning from international contexts, and we will get that today and tomorrow. Five years ago, we partnered with practitioners slash thinkers, intellectuals in their own right, including Sean Basinski and Greg Kettles, people who spend their livelihoods thinking and implanting, implementing practices, policies, and strategies to improve this industry, the life of vendors, and to make local places more open to sustainable vending practices that can be mutually beneficial to vendors, clients, merchants, and residents. This time around, we are similarly drawing on the expertise of some practitioners, including a few repeat performers, to give us perspective on some of the more pressing and interesting legal and other issues on vending and civic and civil participation. What is still pressing? What's different? Not a whole lot. All of it is still pressing. Um, issues regarding the use of public space, the right to the city, and local ordinance enforcements, um, derelic derelictions um, are complicated, we believe, by street vendors' diverse ethnic and racial backgrounds, as well as their immigration status. Contemporary issues that require our research attention continue. Street vending policy, policies and laws, contemporary and historical street vending practices, zoning and planning, public health, the politics of public space, economic outcomes, community building, household and organizational dynamics of street vending, street vendor organizing campaigns, and ethnic and immigrant entrepreneurialism. And these are just a few. Our conference will highlight work that explores the various contestations related to street vending and other street enterprises. Gathering in Los Angeles, it's an interesting, it's a large, and it's an immigrant-rich city. It makes sense for hosting a conference on street vending, and we hope that our location in the heart of Los Angeles here on USC's campus gives you pause um, regarding the interesting topics that we will cover and the lives that we will explore. Street enterprises seem to be blurring, and the increase of technology and mapping allows for new forms of street entrepreneurs, including Uber and similar transportation modalities that clearly have a spatial and a street component to it. Twitter tr trucks and other ambulatory type services similarly seem to spread, evolve, and transform how we interpret and view street markets, as well as immigrant and ethnic entrepreneurialism. Street enterprises and urbanism feed on one another, and I'm pleased that we can host our conversation in one of the greatest cities in the world, the city of my birth as well. USC and UCLA, well, the rivalry is real, but so is our friendship and our collaboration and collegiality. And in days of increasing university austerity, co-hosting conferences makes all kinds of sense. But budgets or convenience shouldn't drive intellectual curiosity and collaboration. And among the three of us, um, you see several decades of thinking and research on numerous issues related to streets, economic opportunity, workers, immigrants, and inequality. To focus all of that on vending allows us to bring various frames, including that of policy, intervention, sociology, geography, and, of course, urban studies and planning to holistically drive this conference forward, its focus, our list of invitees, and to hopefully make an impact to scholarship and to practice. I look forward to sharing that with you today, to working with all of you, and to sharing the stage with my University of Southern California colleagues. 
Finally, and I would um, it would be really bad if I didn't do this, let me thank a few people and institutions who mostly spend their time on the west side of Los Angeles. And that's the Dean of the Division of Social Sciences, my department, the Cesar E. Chavez Department of Chicano and Chicano Studies, and the Center for the Study of Urban Poverty. Um, I hope to see some of those folks. I see some of those folks from UCLA here. Not enough, um, but that sometimes happens when you do co-conferencing. Thank you, everybody. Looking forward to the next couple of days. I am going to real quickly introduce Rafael Bostic, professor um, of urban planning here at UC USC. <laughs> I was almost sent to UCLA. Uh, I want to uh, first say good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's really a pleasure to see so many people here. Uh, this has been uh, a journey for all three of us to get to this point, uh, which has actually been a, a real fun journey uh, as we go through this. Um, and I would say uh, I'm glad Abel talked about the history uh, of this conference um, because it is, this is not just today. Right. This is years of effort, years of thinking, years of research uh, about issues around street vending. And um, I'm happy to have the Bedrosian Center as a new addition to the participation um, of this and the, wor the work on this. Um, I also am happy that we're doing this. You know, Annette came to us and said, would you partner with us? And we said, absolutely. And we did because I th you know, Annette does uh, a really interesting uh, uh, type of research that helps us think about places in a different way. I'm an economist, right? I do numbers and data sets and all that kind of stuff. We don't do pictures. We don't actually go and sometimes we don't even talk to people. Uh, <laughs> and, and so we have a, 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 a one type of understanding of how the world works and how things play out. And I'm so excited to have Annette join us because she gives us a really different take and different way to think about how people live and how places function. And so I want to take this opportunity to publicly welcome you to USC and to Price. It's really a pleasure to have you as a, as a partner. Um, I also want to say I'm very pleased to, to be working with Abel. Um, he is a legend in so many ways. And it's really uh, nice to reach across town and have us really create a partnership that, I'm hope, that I hope will uh, be enduring and will lead to, to more opportunities for collaboration and partnership. Uh, and also, you know, you're the grandfather of all of this. So, uh, so it wouldn't be right if you weren't here. Uh, I want to say a couple things about the conference because I am really pleased to, to be a part of it. And I think it's important to provide a context of uh, how we got here. This conference uh, is a competitive conference, right? So the papers you're going to see over the next two days um, are the ones that won a competition. We asked for submissions for, for papers. And fewer than half of the submissions absolutely got selected. We got tremendous response to the conference call. Uh, and I think that's a testament to the topic and people's willingness and interest in working on these issues and, and with uh, Annette and Abel. And I would also say that uh, as we put the word out that we were going to have this conference, the response was tremendous. And I, I'm just gratified to see all of you here because I think it's it's really important, and I'm glad that so many people share my view on that. So, so thank you for being here as well. I also wanted to just note that, that um, you know, we do, we're doing something a little unusual today with the three keynotes. Um, and then tomorrow, we're doing something a little more conventional with just papers and discussions and academic stuff. But we've also added an experiential twist that I hope that you all take, take, uh, take advantage of. We will have food trucks avail a food truck available for you to enjoy uh, at the reception that follows the session today. So I'm, I'm hopeful that you've all set aside some time to, to, to walk across campus and enjoy uh, that experience, just to sort of ground you in the things that we'll be talking about through the course of today. And then the last thing I wanted to do before we get on to our keynote speakers is really talk a little bit about the Bedrosian Center and why uh, I felt it was a, a good idea and important for the Bedrosian Center to be a part of this conference. So the Bedrosian Center is a center on governance and the governance in the public enterprise. And a lot of what we're talking about today uh, raises questions about uh, governance. How should we regulate? How should we manage? How should we relate to each other? Uh, and to my mind, uh, if we don't 
deal with the governance issue. And there's, per there's personal stuff in there. Uh, aside from what we know, uh, once we decide what we want to do, um, we are going to, to really struggle. Uh, in my experience, um, when policies don't work, about half the time at least is not because we don't know what to do, is that we don't actually get it done. We don't execute, we don't deliver, we don't figure out how to create a framework or rules that uh, can uh, lead us to successfully achieve the, the goals that we want. And so as we go through and talk about the issues of today, um, I'm hopeful that we will keep those governance issues arising. I'm expecting they will come up again and again. Uh, and as such, uh, I really am hopeful that uh, we can use this to advance the cause. So take the knowledge that is generated here, the knowledge that people have had for, uh, for uh, built up over the years, and then translate that knowledge into action. Uh, we're in a policy school here, and you know, one, of, one of my soapbox things is, you know, if, if, if our research is not actually going out and trying to affect policy and make change, then we're not doing it right. And so, I, so I'm hopeful that the things that we learn today uh, and tomorrow uh, will lead us to get new understandings about street vending, uh, contested space, uh, and how we should uh, work and live all together. To, to make our societies uh, more opportunity rich for every person. Uh, and so, so I have big aspirations, and I'm hopeful that, uh, that we will uh, make big progress on that. So I want to thank Annette. I want to thank Abel. I want to thank my staff. So you met my staff, I think, just about everybody when you came in. Donna, Jean, and Aubrey are fantastic uh, and really do uh, help me look good, right? So. <laughs> So I, I always want to make sure that you, that you uh, know the depth of my appreciation for their effort. And then to both of you, thank you again. Uh, it's a great idea, and the execution is fantastic. So uh, with that, I'm going to call Abel back up, uh, and um, we're going to get started. So thank you all. So I'm really, really happy to introduce our, our first speaker, um, in part because it's also um, a welcome, perhaps not to um, USC's campus, but to Los Angeles, and also to my campus at UCLA, um, Professor Ananya Roy's new campus as, as well. Um, professor Ananya Roy is, is, is Professor of Urban Planning and Social Welfare, and the inaugural director of the Institute on Inequality and Democracy at UCLA's Luskin School of Public Affairs. Um, I was a part of the search committee, and I can attest to um, the discussion, the debate, and the enthusiasm of selecting Professor Roy um, for this appointment. And so we were thrilled um, when we went after her, and we were thrilled when she accepted, and we're now um, also thrilled that she is here in Los Angeles and at UCLA. Uh, previously, she was on the faculty at the University of California, Berkeley. Um, her scholarship focuses on urban transformations in the global south, with particular attention to the making of world-class cities and the dispossession and displacements that are um, resultant um, um, as, as a result of these changes. Um, the bio is very detailed, very thoughtful, and well-written, and it makes little sense um, for me to read it in front of you because you all can do that yourselves. Um, but I hope you all share my enthusiasm um, in her accomplishments and in her presence here today. And so I'm very happy to introduce Professor Ananya Roy. My talk today, as you can tell, is titled The City as People's Territory. And I want to start immediately with a caveat, which is that while this conference focuses on vending and public space in global cities, I will not be talking about vending or public space. But I will instead talk about a set of broader issues that speak to urban contestations in cities around the world. My reason for doing that is twofold. First, I like sharing new empirical research, and my new empirical research is not on vending although I've done quite a bit of work on vending earlier in my academic career. But the more important reason is that I'm making an argument that these other urban contestations, and I'm going to focus on contestations that are focused on fighting evictions and foreclosures, that those urban contestations are parallel and intersecting struggles with those around vending and public space. 
And therefore, what I hope to present today is not only this new research, but also an analytical framework that I think bears direct relevance to the theme of the conference. In presenting that analytical framework, I'm going to make three arguments. First, I'm going to invite us to think not just about space, but also about territory. Second, I'm going to ask us to think about the relationship between public space, and particularly the street as a kind of public space, and the home, particularly home ownership. You will see in the talk today that I'm very interested in this new work, in what I'm calling the politics of emplacement. And so I want us to think more broadly about that politics of emplacement. And my work on these struggles around evictions and foreclosures is only one type of politics of emplacement. And third, of course, I want us to think about the global, the global city, but the global also as a methodology. And for those of you familiar with my work, I like thinking about the global not as points on the map, not even in a comparative sense, but as interconnected. And an argument that I'm going to present today is that this new research takes as its guide poor people's movements that are in, in fact forging incredibly interesting and transformative global interconnections. So let me start with territory. My argument about the city as people's territory is partly a reference to a forthcoming book, Territories of Poverty, Rethinking North and South, co-edited with Emma Shaw Crane, to be published later this year by the University of Georgia Press in its Geographies of Justice and Social Transformation series. But my talk this afternoon also extends beyond this book and reflects on new research, notably on the relationship between poor people's movements and territory. I'm interested in how in cities across global north and global south, poor people's movements negotiate new meanings and new practices of the city, and how this both contests and creates new forms of spatial regulation and use. So on the one hand, Following Foucaultian thought, I want to foreground territory as a political technology produced and maintained through calculative practices that, in the words of Stuart Eldon, come to normalize and perpetuate the spatial order of things. On the other hand, following philosopher Achille Mbembe, I view territory, I quote, as a set of po possibilities that historically situated actors constantly realize or resist. You know, we were uh, both students at Berkeley together in the doctoral program. And it's been, I've been watching with admiration um, your eloquent voice. Uh, and I'm really excited to the um, voice and the attention and passion you've incited in the next generation to work on things like inequality. Um, and I look forward to seeing what you do with your institute. So welcome to Los Angeles. 